Well, first of all, I, I sincerely hope that the rise in the share price is not only due to the uh, decision to uh, stop production of the A380 in 2021, but, but primarily due to the fact that we uh, presented good results you were just referring to. Well, I mean, to put, it, uh, to put it simple on the A380, I mean, if you have a product which, despite all the efforts you put into that, uh, you can't sell anymore, or you can sell only below production costs, then you have to stop that product. And this is the decision, a painful decision, that we uh, had to take. wobbling a bit <laughs> so yeah very excited so uh, just relaxing now in uh, well Club Europe service but it's actually the uh, Club World cabin as you can see makes a nice change from the uh, Plowman's which if you've seen my previous videos I went five days on BA and everything the Airbus A380. Um, table's uh, wobbling a bit. <laughs> so yeah, very excited. Um, it's great to see it back in service. service but it's actually the uh, Club World cabin as you can see clearly they're not used to having the BA A380 in Frankfurt uh, it's taken just over an hour which is actually the length of the flight just over an hour to push back get to the runway and take off uh, the captain was saying that they've got five flight crew up on the flight deck this morning so that's a mixture of obviously the captains first officers 22 cabin crew on board um, and it's not a very full flight <laughs> but the purpose of it is to get the staff re familiarized with the uh, this table shaking again it's to obviously get the flight crew re familiarized with the aircraft because of course you know you forget this aircraft has been in storage in Madrid for nearly two years so uh, the captain was telling us that it's gone through a whole lot of checks as you'd expect to bring it back into service, technical checks. And everybody on board, the crew, the flight crew and the cabin crew seem really happy to have the aircraft back in service. As passengers are, I guess. It's, uh, you know, it's a really nice aircraft and people I'm flying with this morning, fellow half geeks, um, they're just amazed how quiet it is. There's the one or two people with us who've never been on an Airbus 380 before. So uh, seatbelt light's just gone off and we'll do some toilet cam in a moment. Not a very full aircraft today at all, as you'd expect. Quite a few passengers seem surprised to be getting on board such a large aircraft. Uh, I think most people are just used to the 320s that they usually have on this route. It's only an hour long, so it's a fairly short flight. Uh, so if you've made it this far in the video, thanks a million. Um, and do stay with me because this video is basically two parts, two flights in one video. So whilst I'm trying out Club Europe this morning, I'm also going to uh, travel on Economy this afternoon down to Madrid, just to prove that sometimes I do fly in Economy. I'm joking. Economy is fine, but particularly on this aircraft because it's going to be really good. So uh, really looking forward to it. 
on these flights between Madrid, uh, Frankfurt and London, these one-off A380 specials, they're not loading any passengers on the upper deck. And what they've said is just obviously feel free to take photos and videos because you're not invading anybody's personal space. So what you're looking at here is on the A380 on the upper deck is the premium economy cabin. And I like premium economy. If you see, saw my previous video to New York last year on the 747, I sat in premium economy. And as you can see, there is quite a lot of leg room. And let's just take a seat. So I'm quite tall, over six foot. And there is a lot of leg room here. And it's a much nicer, more spacious seat. And don't forget if you fly premium economy, it has a lot of benefits. It's Sometimes it's not much more money than flying in economy. And you will get extra tier points if you collect the status with British Airways. So if you're sort of silver or gold, or aspiring to be silver or gold, this can often be a really cheap way to do it, especially on the route from Heathrow to Dubai and the other Middle East destinations. It's well worth doing if you're really trying to get status. And as you can see, you know, there's a lot of interest in this from various people who you wouldn't traditionally associate as being Afgeeks, I suppose. You know, everybody is genuinely interested in this aircraft. It, uh, it is truly marvellous to have it back in service. And Launched in December 2000 with a first flight on the 27th of April 2015 and costing more than $25 billion to bring to market, the Airbus A380 became the largest passenger aircraft in service. Its remarkable looks make it one of those iconic aircraft that you just can't fail to notice. With just 254 A380s built, 123 of those with Emirates, its largest operator and having failed to crack the crucial US market, it was announced that the final Airbus A380 would leave the factory in early 2021. So just trying out first class and I'm going to have to return to my seat shortly I think because as you heard the captain just said there we'll be landing in about 20 minutes. But wow, yeah, I mean this is just a dream for me, getting a guided tour of a, an Airbus 380 that's just come back into service and um, yeah, yeah, very very nice aircraft. Arriving back at Heathrow, it's time for a quick bite to eat in my favourite first lounge, along with a visit to British Airways exhibitions of old aircraft, including my favourite Lockheed TriStar, which I flew on regularly as a young person. you up to date as you can see I'm uh, on my way to Madrid now and sat in Club World Club Europe the club seat the long haul club seat on the way down to Madrid um, so I didn't end up in economy as it happens because when I went to check in at Heathrow 
when I got off the flight from Frankfurt this morning, um, the lady who checked me in took my bag, couldn't explain it, um, but I was booked in economy, and she said, you're in Club Europe. <laughs> so, at some point, somebody in British Airways has upgraded me to Club Europe since the first thing this morning when I checked in online. So, much appreciated, obviously, but the one thing I can't therefore bring you is a review of the World Traveller seat or economy seat uh, on the Airbus A380. But the good news, the good news is that we have had, uh, as you said, as you saw, sausage and mash, bangers and mash, as they call it on BA, and it was delicious with that wonderful, nice, thick <laughs> gravy, which I keep banging on about. Uh, that's the, the pinnacle of business class catering is how thick the gravy is and this one today was excellent because it also had the uh, onion in it and uh, you know it's one of those things with me I uh, love nice thick rich onion gravy and of course that uh, nice mashed potato with uh, nice viscosity <laughs> I think we're about, we've probably got about another hour or so yet before we land in Madrid. It is a really comfortable cabin. It's, I wish all aircraft were like this. I would quite happily fly on an Airbus A380 between London and Manchester, to be honest, but I don't think there's the demand for it. Um, but it is such a nice cabin to fly on. Um, it's, it's spacious, it's roomy. Uh, let me just turn this light off because it's a bit annoying. Um, so it's spacious, it's roomy, I love the cabin lighting, it's very subtle at the moment and you're probably thinking well I can't really, s I, you can't see him, you can't, you can't see me that well, the light's not strong enough and I think, I think that's the idea, I think that's the design, designed for sleep and relaxation and rest, so when you get to your destination you feel that much more refreshed. You know, if I think back to when I was younger and when I used to fly a lot long haul destinations 20 years ago and, and more you know longer than that I know I don't look it but when I first started flying long haul it was on the aircraft of the era where like the DC-10, Lockheed Tristar what came after that 767s and the 767s kind of changed the travel experience because I remember I flew on the Tristar quite a lot with Caledonian and one flight back from Florida. Not only could it not, didn't have the fuel range to make it back to Manchester, so I had to stop in Bangor in Maine, on the northeast coast of the States, to fuel up before it flew out over the Atlantic. Um, but I always remember, I loved that aircraft, but you always felt really tired and really drained after flying on it for a few hours. Whereas, I've done long haul on the 380 and it's, you feel that much more relaxed. You feel quite refreshed and long haul's long haul. I always say to people, it doesn't matter even if you, you could be in super duper first class. You know, you could have somebody wafting you with a nice little fan for the whole flight. Long haul flying is tiring and it doesn't matter how good the cabin is. Even if you've got the super duper Singapore Airlines suite, or if you fly an Emirates first class, it's still a long haul flight. You're still going to be tired. You're still crossing time zones. There's no getting away from that. But I think Airbus have done a fabulous job on this aircraft in designing something that is so pleasant to fly on. And it's really nice. It's, it's, it's a really nice plane. Well, hello there, gentlemen, it's Captain uh, Colin Donaldson. Hope you've enjoyed the flight with us so far. We're just beginning a, a slightly early descent for Madrid. And uh, should be arriving in just around about 40 minutes' time from now. Yeah.
the uh, weather in Madrid is uh, it's quite a nice day at the moment. The temperature of uh, 80 degrees, nice and dry. A little bit breezy from the north. Should be arriving on the ground around about uh, 6:45 local time. If you need to set your watch, it's just about one hour ahead. That's about 6:45. And it's a very short taxi once we get on to the ground, we a very short taxi on to our stand. So cabin crew, that's now 40 minutes to that day, 40 minutes. So there you go. So that is quite short, that, that's quite a, a long descent. Uh, so we are just over the coast, looking at the map, just over Santander in northern Spain. So uh, that is quite a gradual descent down into Madrid. A very short flight of course. And I wish I was staying on this for hours more. This is such a great aircraft, it really is. It's a really nice plane to fly on. And as I said at the start, it's not the nicest aircraft to look at. It's an, it's an unusual aircraft. It's not unpleasant, it's just an unusual aircraft to, to look at from the outside. But um, very nice aircraft to fly on and yeah it's, it's such a shame that Airbus had to pull the plug on it but the good news is that Airbus deliveries have continued in the A380 uh, this year so uh, I believe the last Airbus A380 is in the paint shop at the moment and it's November 21 as I speak so this aircraft is still going to be flying for another 20 25 years perhaps uh, so the Airbus 380 itself is, you know, it's not dead. You, you, you'll still be able to fly on one for many years to come. And there are still a few operators around the world of them. Unfortunately, after this year, though, there will be no new deliveries. And there just isn't the market for it. Airlines just don't seem to want four-engine jets anymore. And you can understand the economics of that, I guess. But for as, a, as a passenger, as a passenger on board, there's probably no better way to travel. So there we have it. Not quite game over for the Airbus A380, but don't be like my friends who now say, I wish I'd tried the Boeing 747 with British Airways, or I wish I'd tried Concorde. Do try the Airbus A380 before they're all gone. Coming up on the channel soon, I've got the mighty 757, the Boeing 767, as well as trying some good old five-star hotels down in the Canary Islands. So stay tuned, and I'll see you soon.